YouTubers and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review I'm taking a look at the new 12th Doctor action figure as seen in series 9, the episode the girl who died. So first off, a massive thank you to Character Options and Evolution PR for sending me an advanced preview of this figure. And let's begin by taking a look at the packaging. So the figure comes in the new Collector's Series packaging that we've seen on previous 12th Doctor figures and the Missy figures and Clara. It features the current Doctor Who logo and a few box outs of information. And then on the back we have a picture of the figure and a little biography about the 12th Doctor as well as a little added extra about Series 9. So out of the box, let's take a look at the articulation. So he has articulation at the neck, only ever so slight, you can't do a full 360. Uh, the shoulders can move back and forth. It's slightly hindered by the coat, but they're also on a joint so that they can swing outwards as well, that sort of half ball joint. They have articulation at the biceps, at the elbows, and also at the wrists. Down to the waist, the waist can also swivel. The legs have articulation at the hips, allowing them to move forwards and out to the sides. He also has articulation at the thigh. His knee can pivot back and forth. And he also has ankle articulation that can also rotate. Looking at the details then, beginning with the head sculpt. So it's a brand new sculpt from the original one that we saw with the Series 8 12th Doctor. The most notable difference, of course, is the longer hair, but the face is slightly different as well. As you can see, the eyebrows are now more shaped, so they look more like he's sort of pulling a bit of a frown. Personally, I think that just looking at his head, it looks more like Capaldi, but it does feature the same issue as the previous 12th Doctor figures, which is the sculpt is incredibly soft, so much so that he doesn't have a line on his face, or very, very barely, they're very, very soft, which is a shame because obviously Capaldi does have a very liney face. You can't see that here. It does make him look a lot younger than he actually is, to the point where my girlfriend actually said she thought it looked like a teenager with grey hair. I'll leave it up to you whether you prefer this version or the previous version. Unfortunately with my 12th Doctor you can see there's a tiny bit of paint rub above his top lip, which is a bit of a shame, but otherwise the paint apps on the face are very well done. You can see the blue of the iris and the white dots on the pupil of the eyes, the pink of the lips, the eyebrows, they've all been painted on very well indeed. Looking at the hair though, this has been nicely sculpted and painted, it's dark grey, with then this light grey wash over the top. On this figure it does seem that the light grey is a bit minimal, it should probably be much lighter than this, it does look a little too dark. So I think with the slightly too dark hair and the softness of the sculpt it does mean that the 12th Doctor doesn't really look as old as he should do. Going down to the costume, the coat is a different sculpt from the previous version, mainly because of this new hoodie piece, so the lapels aren't actually sculpted beneath the hoodie, that's all smooth and the hoodie is just fitted over the top. But looking at the coat there's some nice details with the buttons and the buttonholes and the seams around the lapels. These are all very crisp and neat and it's a shame that that sort of crispness of the sculpt didn't extend to the head. Underneath the coat, as you can see, he is wearing his hoodie and a t-shirt. The t-shirt is just white with pink and red patterns and a black stripe along the top. That's all you can really see of it. It works well. And then beneath that you have the hoodie, which has the zip sculpted onto it. And as you can see, these have both been painted silver for extra added attention to detail. On the inside of the coat, you can see that he still has the red and then for extra detail on the cuffs, you can see he has one of the buttons painted red and the others are painted black. And then around the back you have the blue sculpted hoodie, as if the hoodie is draping over his shoulders. Moving down to the hands, as you can see he still has the gold ring on his finger. This time however there is no green jewel painted on, something that was there on the Series 8 version. And then going down to the legs, you can see he's got these dark grey trousers with these yellow checkers on. You will notice however that they are quite washed out and dirty in places and this is because there does appear to be some sort of a grey blackish wash over the top just to make it look like the trousers aren't pristine, they're a bit tatty. And then we move down to the shoes. Again these are very nicely sculpted, different from the Series 8 versions, namely because they have this little tag at the back, uh, but it still has all the same details, such as the 
holes in the laces sculpted on very neatly and then of course the brown of the soles of the shoes. He also comes with a single accessory which is his sonic screwdriver which he doesn't have in this episode but he does gain at the end of the series. It's incredibly well sculpted, you can see all the very fine details with, of the little switch on the sonic screwdriver and all the individual little elements on the sides. Very well done, very well painted highlighted with blue paint and the silver bits and also some little trims of gold there. Although I'm not a fan of this sonic screwdriver, I have to admit that this has been very well done in this small scale. One thing to point out is this figure actually is slightly taller than the original Series 8 12th Doctor. Now it's not just because he's got longer hair. No, the whole figure just seems ever so slightly larger. Very key areas that you can notice this are the shoes, which are massive. His feet are like clown feet. It's kind of ridiculous. You can just see that he is a lot taller and just a lot larger than the other 12th Doctor, which in itself was already large compared to the previous five and a half inch scaled figures that we had previously bought. But he looks massive when you compare him to the new 10th Doctor. And I've measured this guy up and he is practically six inches tall. So, so much for the 5.5 inch scale. And I'm pretty sure that Capaldi is either the same height or shorter than Tennant. And as you can see here, he just towers above the new 10th Doctor figure, which is exactly the same height as all the previous 10th Doctor figures. But overall, I think this is a nice addition to the line. There are a few issues, like I pointed out, with the head sculpt particularly. It's such a shame that it just lacks that crispness. This paintwork seems really well done otherwise, but it's just the crispness of the sculpt. Perhaps it is the thickness of the paint application for the skin tone has just drowned out all the sculpting detail. I'd be interested to see if any customizers manage to strip that off and get down to the bare sculpt. But otherwise, I think this is a great figure. Uh, I'm not particularly keen on the whole hoodie look for the 12th Doctor, but I think here it does work very well and all of those details like the zippers and the t-shirt all are captured very nicely indeed. So this figure will be available very soon from Forbidden Planet and from Character Online. And unlike the previous collector's figures, these will actually be $9.99. So thank you very much for watching guys and stay tuned for more reviews of the upcoming 5.5 inch collector series figures.